Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an Intermec CK3N handheld computer dash scanner. They actually call it a yeah, handheld computer because of its Windows Mobile 6.1 and it can run all sorts of uh, applications and stuff. This one is from 2009. I got this one as defect, but I think it is maybe just because the battery is missing. And here is the battery connector and the SD card for uh, data, scan, storage, whatever kind of storage that is for. And uh, this one got a very, very advanced scanner. Look at that. So we got some laser in there and some camera stuff, distance sensors, and lights and all kind of stuff. A super advanced uh, scanner. So I look forward to play with that. I've been trying to Google around and see if I am, uh, if, if I could find pin out for the battery but that was not possible so now I will try and disassemble this thing and see if that is possible if you look at the numbers down there you see a 1 and a 7 and then you see a 2 and 8 what I did find from pictures from batteries that means pin 1 and 2, they're connected together, and 7 and 8, they're connected together. So I definitely think that that will be power, right? So if you look a little bit here, it looks like 1 and 2 is chassis, or is the, the ground plane, and 7 and 8 goes out to the three test pads over there. And the reason for this three test pads that probably the current so i think seven and eight is the positive and this is a two cell so it's going to be seven volts right so that is going to be my first try and give it seven volts on seven and eight wish me luck otherwise i had something that was broken to begin with and then Oh, that will be the pen. So you pull out the pen and then you point with the pen, write this and write that here on the screen. So that's pretty cool. We got all PTT. Yeah, and it got uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and uh, all sorts of uh, this uh, NFC and stuff like that. It's fully, fully feature packed. Yeah, let's try and power it up. I'll try and crank up the voltage here and I don't see any kind of response. So that was three, four, five, six, seven. So, of course, this thing just don't seem to be working. But I'm really sure that I'm doing this right. No, this one fell off. Oh, that was light. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha it is alive. Clean boot, the system warning, clean booting will erase. PTT button, no. Scan button, where's the scan button? Is it that one? Starting windows. Oh, look at that, it is alive. It's using 300 milliamps. So it takes a little bit of time for it to load. Build in, 
Yes, it is from 2009. I got a little bit of problem with the light here. Ah, damn it, damn it, damn it! This damn thing is falling off all the time. Hey! So I soldered wires <laughs> to, to the battery connector. And now it's loading Windows Mobiles. I, I see a little bit of flickety flick. And then I can push the... Push the buttons here, I don't know. Is that the scan? It takes a million years for this thing to load. And I see some funny flicker flicker stuff on the screen. That can't be, oops. Okay, getting started. Tap here to set owner information. So there's definitely some, ooh. There's definitely something wrong with it. See, we got some funny flippity flappity Wi Fi unavailable. How about we click? Is that the enter? Wi Fi? Let's see if we can get this. Probably I need a stylus uh, pen or some stuff. Installing. How do I do this? This is for the patient kind of dudes. So that means it is definitely not a thing for me, really. What? Well, uh, come no man. Why is it so sh shitty? And then this funky, funky noise. <laughs> so that's probably a... Yeah. Is that a loose connection somewhere? Yeah. It's looking like it's something that just happens all by itself. It's not related to any mechanical kind of things. Nope, it just happens. So is there any like escape or go back or notes cap blah 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 I don't know how to use this kind of goopity goop ah oh, man I think I figured out what is going on because it's actually see it's installing all sorts of stuff so that means this is what is preventing me from doing anything Calendar. I, mean, I think the touch is not really working, or maybe it has something to do with. See, it's just installing this and installing that all the time. So I just think I need to wait, which is a terrible, terrible thing to put me through. I really don't know how I'm going to cope with this waiting thingy especially this is not working at all Ugh. but there's a response up here or is that just anywhere on the screen oh my gosh it actually said the device will reset in four seconds when it was done doing all the installs and stuffity stuff and now it's uh, restarting and then let's see if it works I just record all this uh, because it could be fun to see how long it takes to do all this install and stuff like that and you should definitely just skip it if it's of no interest um, but let's see if it's uh, responding to Oh yeah, there's definitely some screen noise. Ooh.
getting started. But I really would like to see if the Why can't I see the calendar? Well, if I do like this and then hit enter, I open the calendars, see? So, I mean, this is just way off. There will probably be a calibration of the touch. But there's so much noise in the there's probably some moisture or some stuff that is in the one of the connectors, so I think it's more fun to try and, uh, and open it and see if I can get it up and running. Programs, what kind of programs have we got? I would like to see something with scanners. And you need to probably install some sort of a scanner thing. But it's the blue... Yo! Oh, yo, 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 yo. Oh, those are really, really bright. Oh, there's also a laser. Look over here. Oh, and I can hear some. Wickedy, wickedy, wickedy. So the that will be LEDs, right? Well, let me get a, a piece of paper. And you can probably see there's also. Yes. Let me point it up here. See? That one is the laser. That dot. So, both a laser and some powerful LEDs. Okay, maybe if I go... So I opened the notes and then let's try the scan. So that's just a normal barcode. It should be able to... Ha ha! Look at that! And that number is... Definitely that number. Hee <laughs> hee! So of course the damn thing works! So I removed all the screws from this uh, unit and it was still not able to open. So I took it and Squeeze, squeezy, squeezy a little bit, and then now it kind of opens. And of course, we'll have quite a lot of wires going down here. So I feel that we need to be very, very careful about that. But luckily, that is oh wow, look at that! So there's a magnetic detector, and that's probably. Uh, for docking. So when this one is in the dock, there will be a magnet that will reach this one and then the loudspeaker. We got three wires for the loudspeaker. That is weird. But anyway, let's just unplug those two connectors real careful. I think that is a little bit odd, isn't it? So it's glued here and then, okay, so that is definitely how it works. So now we are inside, and that is beautiful. There's a big super cap, and oh no, that one leaked. Look at that. That super cap completely puked. So that can't be good. But we don't have acid all over the place but in here is another module and then there's an antenna that goes to that module and then there's another antenna oh look at that and that's because we got both bluetooth and wi-fi so here's an antenna and here's an antenna two cables going into a radio module and this leaked capacitor can't wait to look a little bit deeper to about that kind of scanner thingy here. That is quite sexy. What is that? So those two 
black thingies. Look at that. It goes into some... Some sort of stuff here. What exactly is going on there? Okay, that we need to inspect. Mm-hmm. The rest here is quite normal. We got some super compact chip packages right there. See, they're not even in plastic, but just directly in silicon. And that is how most compact ICs are made today, even in 2009. But I think we need to open this completely. Oh, one of my little honeys. So I removed the camera module and the super cap that was in that connector save that for later and then I realized uh, there's actually a third coax cable going out of the radio module so it goes up here so there's also a Wi-Fi antenna here it is really that packed with antennas I'm gonna go and disassemble the whole thing and let's have a look at the radio stuff that is not easy. Why are you not? So that is one of the antennas. Could be interesting to to measure that one, but I think that is Bluetooth. And then the other twos will be. Oh yes, look at that. So it got. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in that module. How do we get that out? So I'm just going for all the screws that I can find. And let's see what what happens here. So how is this? Oh dear. Oh my goodness. That is some sexy connector. Wow, wow, wow. Nice. <laughs> so we got a shield... And this is also made of either aluminium or, let me see, how can I get this and just unplug those connectors real careful. Those are actually the, the thicker type of quarks. And this is uh, definitely what I, I would use. Otherwise, it's going to cost you performance if you use those super, super thin ones, because there's just so much loss. Uh, at those high frequencies. Okay. Yeah, this is metal. And then we got the antenna here at the top. And uh, that will be our Wi Fi and Bluetooth module. It even says a lot of. Yeah. So this is just for thermal. Says a little bit here about Bluetooth, Mac, and Mac. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful radio module. I think we can probably, if we're really, really careful, we should be able to remove the shells. But I really don't want to break anything here. No, I probably should use some other tools for that. So down here we got the CPU modules. We can even see some of the chips there, see? I don't know if this is easy to see, but on this kind of shield metal, we still see a little bit of acid leaks. Remember that big capacitor was located here, so it did drip a little bit down here in this area. So that can, of course, confuse electronics because this kind of drip drip kind of stuff is definitely conductive I'm trying to see oh yeah it is coming 
All I have to do is be very, very careful. Because I kind of don't want to break this. I want to see if I can fix it or maybe use it for some funny thing. At least it had a really nice and sexy scanner, so... It's going to be cool to see if I can get it up without breaking it. Oh no, I still... S oh, I also see some leak. Mm -hmm. I think I have actually understood how to assemble and how to disassemble that. And it was... I actually did it wrong. Because as you can see here, the two connectors to the display and to the touch, I kind of just pulled them out of their sockets. The idea is... This piece of aluminium is supposed to be here and then lift it all together in like one sandwich. Otherwise you can't connect the touch and the display interface. But now you see again all this leaked assets is also here and very close to the display. And yes, we did see some display flicker flicker, right? And I don't know if this is easy to see on the video. But in this area, it's completely full of all this leaked goobity goop. This can't be good. So the idea is... Yeah, you see what I'm saying? All this is kind of one unit, so that piece of metal here... That is the entire display, right? So that should go... Yeah, you also see some corrosion here. Ooh, that is actually blue. Yeah, so it is of course full of water and acid and all sorts of bad. Come on, man. How are we supposed to get you out if you are this difficult? There are no other screws and stuff here, man. What is the secret behind this? Sometimes you just need to be a little rough to get stuff. And sometimes when you're a little bit too rough, it just say, craggity craggity dumbass, and then it's all trash. So that's why I'm kind of playing it super slow and safe. Oh, after a little bit of research here, I kind of figured it out. See? There's a little groove and a little holder holder here. So all you have to do is take your little screwdriver and then do a little lifty lift here. And then the display comes out. And that is of course also possible when this whole thing is assembled in one unit. You don't unscrew any of this and then you take out the entire display like that. Now you get the point. And here's the display full of corrosion and more nasty stuff. Yeah. That is how it is. It's actually full of, yeah, rubber and all kind of good stuff to make it, to seal it against the environment. It is a very, very good quality product, and that is the, wow, a very thick glass display. Look at that. Definitely not cheapo. That is some good stuff here, huh? But there's a lot of cleanup. And it is also full of Bad corrosion here. And I also know that the touch was completely bad, bad. Oh, here is another one to show you. Full of corrosion. Look at that. Oh no, it's just so leaky, leaky bad. But this is a very good idea to have some metal all the way around. Connected to ground and all that kind of stuff so when you come and touch with your static discharges 
you need to steer that, that discharge exactly where you wanted it to go. Otherwise, I can guarantee you that flash over is going to happen exactly where it's going to break most parts. Oh, don't ask me why I know that. So, yeah, I'm a little bit sad about the corrosion in this area here. Well, here we go with all the switch mode power supplies. Definitely located in the same area and that is a good idea. And this is what you would do if you're a real smart engineer. You definitely want to put all your switch modes as close to each other as possible. You don't want to put them all over the board. So yeah, all this is soldered. All those dribbity dropity here, right? That means I am not supposed to get in here. Because I can't. Oh, it is. I would really, really love to open this, but uh, if I am able to do that and get it back, is it one of those clickety clickety click mechanisms you're supposed to? It is super, super thin. Quite a lot of layers in that one. It's always funny to to search for layer identifications. I really prefer to have layer identification so you can prove that the board was correctly manufactured, but sometimes they kind of don't do that. Well, well. What else can we play with? So that is a cooler for the camera. And that down here is the laser that goes on here. EMC shielding. That is good. So there's a good connection. We we'll also see some leaked assets. Oh, see? That was actually. I thought it was actually leaky, liquid. Oh, look at that. So that here's another connector for the camera and then ferrite shielding. And this is again of course, all this is super, super highly active in here. So they try to shield it so it's not radiating anything. And then with this ferrite, they try to remove this part of the cable to act like an antenna for all the active goody goody in here. So that is why you have the ferrite as close to the emitter as possible. Classic way to do that. Let's see if I can open this real careful. Mm-hmm. That laser looks like it could be quite powerful. Okay, so the idea is the this is just Yeah, some unpopulated LEDs, so there's no lenses, right? But you could have clicked in a lens here. So they just stuffed in some, see, some goo goo glue into that one. And then the that LED is not mounted, but it's here. A super powerful LED. And then the camera module will be in here somewhere. It is a beautiful, beautiful camera module oh, 
it is really really nice and compact look at that design how it is actually connected with the it is not a flex pcb but it is actually a little connector strip that is soldered like that see that's probably the image chip or something like that right look at the tiny little cables that goes around to this and to that I mean beautiful beautiful mechanical integrations with PCBs inside uh, all this metal here oh we got holes holes in here for that IC in the metal construction like that it's just I also do electronic design and work with, together with mechanical engineers and share mechanical files and do PCBs and integration like all this and I just love to see what kind of stuff other people can do right here's an unpopulated IC yeah this is definitely some beautiful beautiful um, compact what is that look at that there's a motor there's a motor here that will move this uh, that is focus or zoom or some stuff oh that is sexy in here is a motor nice I would love to go in there and have a look if that is possible but I'm afraid I'm gonna break those see if I unscrew this to have a look in here then there is a chance I will break this one is soldered to the back side and then this one oh man I don't want to break it but I really would love to see that little motor in there but I think you get the point there is a tiny little motor in here as well Oh, that is some some sexy construction definitely but I think that is uh, all I wanted to show you guys I didn't want to make this video a million minutes long I just wanted to show you all the cool stuff that was inside this uh, this uh, scanner I maybe want to poke a little bit here and see if I could open this and then still I think it is but how can you solder something when this looks like coated plastic or something I don't understand this interface here it looks like little solder blobs but it could also be a connector of some sort maybe we got some little balls that's kind of soldered to the PCB and then those just clicks on but if I break this yes look at that it looks like yeah we got some tiny little tiny little balls and I am actually able to pull this off it was supposed to be pulled off ha ha so yes that was definitely how it works you can see the little balls all the way around here so they are actually soldered to that PCB and then this shielded thin 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 metal shield actually just clicks onto those balls I mean that is I haven't seen this before this kind of this method here we go so that is the bottom side of the CPU section and then on the other side of the CPU section it is packed with all the good stuff so that will be this CPU RAM flash interface right I don't know exactly what that one is. 
Oh, that's the USB. Aha, uh -huh, so this is the USB chip for for the interface. And down here is a microphone. So it's probably also able to do um, audio. That is interesting. So there's a microphone. Cool. Fully featured portable computer with everything in one little package. Oh yeah, let's uh, look inside the the radio module as well. Broadcom for Wi-Fi, dual band, RXTX amplifier, and Bluetooth. Yeah, so I think I'm done now with the disassemble. Now we'll <laughs> put it back together and do a super duper deep clean. Hopefully it's going to work. I'm not a little bit too excited about it because all this uh, leaked all over the place. And of course the vapors from this also kind of corrodes stuff and just go into all sorts of places where it's not supposed to go. So not only the places where I can see it, but you know, I mean, that is uh, not so good. You can see it. It's all over the place here. 